Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel. That is Deb Chanel's 48's World and I am your girl Deb Chanel. Yes, get on into it. Hey, we're going to be talking about The Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired on last night. Eastern Standard Time, my time zone, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time Zone. It aired at 8 o'clock on Bravo TV station, okay? And it was season 12, episode 11, called Snake Bye. Okay, and I want to say bye, Cass, because y'all just got on my last nerves. If I had any left, I would have did the uh, review, recap, and got it to y'all last night. But technically, they had got on my nerves just watching this fake, foolishness, fuckery, fraudulent type of behavior okay i'm just saying my four elves and i was just too fit to be tired i'm like mm -mm, i can't do it lord <laughs> i can't even talk about this debacleness oh this foolishness i saw last night i was like oh my god oh my god only thing i can say the mvps for this episode that aired last night was none other than marlo hampton and Yavana. I hate to see Yavana go, but I don't think she's going to be a part of the cast anymore because she was deemed the snake, which anybody had eyes to see. They had did a little clip already when um what's now Yavana and Marlo had met over the Nini house because Nini needed someone to take with and she befriended Yavana to have her come over. And I think Nini just really concocted this little story about let's have an audio. Let's have Let's put out something that Cynthia was talking, you know, behind my back. And she was just doing it maliciously and viciously and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, I didn't believe it then. And you sure damn didn't believe it as we don't rose up to the little part of this uh, season that we all wanted to see that they just kept teasing us with. Okay? I knew it wasn't nothing. Because... Yvonne came on the scene at Nene's house having brunch or lunch or whatever you want to call it. And Marla was present. And Yvonne going to sit up there and say, oh, yeah, I got some recording on Cynthia talking about you real bad and this, that, and the third. And then she went so far as to visit Cynthia at her bar barbecue, Bailey barbecue that she have annually you know around some time of the year each year and she invite her castmates to come out and and you know partake of a nice barbecue that she done made up for them as far as a taping scene you know because now i don't really start looking at them and i probably go forward with, with this uh with me continuing doing reviews on them i'm just gonna say they all colleagues because they're not friends let's just be honest they out there to get their money and if they have to do a little fake fraudulent stuff it's gonna be what it is because portia i just can't believe you know how she's acting and how she's giving all these different accolades to a man that cheated on her and she not even married to the man you know he don't put her in counseling uh, he done made her lose her sanity for a minute there uh, when she was going through her bouts of whether she wanted to stay with him or whether she uh, wasn't going to stay with him. Talking all high and mighty and then when we get back to season 12, they done made up. And so now we had to go watch all of this unraveling of her life and, and what she felt she wanted to have. But Dennis had tore that apart. He had to put a little tarnish thing on the memory she wanted to create with him just a whole lot of bullshit because we already know she back with him to me in my eyes he don't look like he want to change he don't look like he gonna change once a cheater always a cheater once a liar always gonna be a liar because he even said he's gonna upgrade her ring or he's looking to upgrade her ring or how do you say it i think i'm gonna have to upgrade that ring child please and then they tell me he's spending what seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on that I'm like if it was that much, why would you even tell anybody unless you're just trying to floss? And then again, if it was that much, why would you want Portia to walk out the house with that? And no bodyguard, no artillery uh, bodyguards around her just for her finger in case somebody wanted to act froggy and try to take it from her. I'm pretty sure, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm thinking correctly and you with me on the same page, Dennis. Hopefully you got 
that insured. Okay, I'm just saying because I, I never understood it. You know, and Beyonce, if just to use her as a, an example, I'm pretty sure she got a rock too, but she ain't flossing it. She ain't out there with it all the time. Because why would you even get stuff like that that you know somebody can come and take from you at will? Okay, I'm just saying, just, you know, just trying to make some sense and logic out of this because this whole episode was a pure fuck fest. I'm just going to tell you. Per fuck fist. All right, I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. But like I said, Yovana was that chick. She showed me Clark Atlanta style, how she was doing her claim to find. Like, Portia don't want that smoke. She don't want that smoke, but Yovana's small. She want Portia to hit her. And I wouldn't be surprised if she fell to the floor and um, went into fetal position. You know that position like that when the baby all crunched up? And sucking the fingers and the toes and anything it can put its mouth in, you know, on. And then sue Portia for everything but dear life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I really wanted somebody to grab somebody and hold them so tight they would be shaking them every which way but loose. You know what I'm saying? Just, 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 just hold them there. You know what I'm saying? Don't slap them. Don't do nothing. But just, just pin them up and shake them each to the west, the south, the north. Uh, east and, and, and no, don't let them loose because we had the many faces of Nene as you can tell we don't know who we playing with these days I'm going to start calling her grandma because just how her demeanor is now it's like Nene is diminishing before our eyes I mean even when she was trying to tell them that you know she's not a snitch she's not this that and the third social media been tearing her up Remember that line she said she don't talk to vloggers and this, that, and the third. Then somebody had brought out Lil B. Scott and, and the little taping she did with Nene. Like probably in 2008 when the show had started. When she was the old Nene, you know, coming out looking like an everyday person. And then, you know, when you got a little money, you just transition yourself up. Or you upgrade yourself until you can't even recognize who you are. Inside as well as outside. But anyway, they show a little clips and it kind of de debunked what Nene was saying, making her look real stupid, you know, uh, in the social media realm and the eyes of people that were really believing in Nene. But I already knew Nene, she a little lying from the get go because everybody, when you start a new show, uh, and you deem like the head person that people are going to be looking at because you're giving us so much drama. I mean, Nene knew how to stir up drama back in the day. Now, what happened to her? I don't know. Maybe it's the fame fortune and she just got the big head and she just don't know where she at in her mind these days. Okay. But Nene from 2008 to probably 2000. 18 were really strong really good showing hbic material but now it's just like she confused she don't know where she at and i think she do need to retire y'all or just be a friend of the friend of the show or something because she ain't bringing that she ain't coming with that she's like she want to play that victim again now we had the whole scenario where she wanted to make greg her storyline and he was going through counsel then he went through remission and all of that and she was feeling overwhelmed and so absorbed to where she couldn't function and you know, trying to make it all about her and we don't had that storyline we don't sympathize with her but it's like she wants everybody to let her be the spokesperson and you know they can do whatever they want to and i'm like this is a new day this is a new age nini okay you need to stay up with the times but it seems like you don't got weary you don't got tired and from what they say on the streets, you got three more years to be here. So I think tw uh, tw 2021, let me see, because it was 19, 2019, they were saying it. So you might got 2021, and then you may be washed up for this show. I'm just saying. And Lord knows you don't have a good spiel. Now, if you ain't control your money and be able to float without this show, I don't know what to say, Faker. I don't know what to say. But we're going to go into this little scene. Y'all remember that little scene? When Cynthia and... um. What's her name? Kenya Moore and the baby. Brooklyn was out. Well, Kenya Moore came to visit Cynthia at her little wine tasting uh, vineyard or whatever or event hall or, or shop. Hell, I don't know what Cynthia got over there. But anyway, she was having her own little winery and uh, um, Kenya came out to visit her, her and the baby and all this. And they really couldn't talk, which I don't understand why they just didn't stay in her little shop and talk. But they went next door to a little cookie shop. Now, 
Maybe it's just me, family. I don't know. You know, because, you know, I get kind of absent-minded here and there. You know what I'm saying? I, or I remember things that how I want to remember them. Or I remember things and I forget about the other stuff because it's just bullshit to me. But I don't remember that particular clip where they're showing us now. Like they showed us from the beginning of the season, the season 12. That scene did not take place. They're trying to goop us. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to mess with our mentality. I never seen that particular episode. Because God knows if I saw that particular episode when they were trying to say Paul was fooling around on Tanya. I wouldn't have spent my time trying to... um do a recap and review of how Kenya was tearing Cynthia up about being too thirsty, you know, about ask, waiting for the man to ask you, not being out there trying to show him uh, wedding gowns and wedding rings and honeymoons and, you know, every time we take a scene, you're talking about getting with Mike, being Mike's wife and all this. I wouldn't have wasted my time on that. Hell, I would have went bit on that story about what do you mean? What do they mean Paul is fooling around on Tanya? You know, as good as Tanya is running around now. Child! But see, this is how bogus Bravo has gotten, where they're going to shove something in our face, thinking we believe that, when they didn't even show it to us during the season, okay? So I'm like, don't pull that mess, Bravo. I may be old, but I ain't stupid, okay? I ain't stupid. I don't remember seeing that scene. And if anybody else saw that scene uh, around season uh, I mean, season 12, but around episode 1 through 4, you let me know. Because the only scene I, I saw was when Kenya and Portia was, not Kenya and Portia, but Kenya and Cynthia was sitting there talking about how thirsty she was about trying to marry Mike. And Mike ain't even tried to attempt to propose to her yet. And, you know, all this stuff. Because that's all I saw. That's all I saw now. And then we got this this little picture right here. Y'all remember, came over, that's what I'm saying, Nene. And, and was listening to Yvonne because Yvonne said she had some tapings going on. I thought they were just faking frauds. I knew that was some bullshit from the get-go. That's something her and Nene had got up and probably Nene said, you know, if you play it right, you can be a reoccurring friend of the show, just like Marlo as well as Tanya. And you can get you some taping time and develop yourself and get you a storyline and then they'll you know, bring you back. But we got to think of something spectacular to put out there to have for myself as a storyline because I ain't got one. Now, how they concocted this mess about is a recording because I don't give a shit. You know, my whole thing is it doesn't matter whether you hate me and I was saying some foul things because nine times out of ten, I'm going to come back and say them foul things to you, okay? It just is what it is, whether you take me, you videograph me, whatever, okay? Threw it up in the air and wrote it in um sparklers, okay, okay? I, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say the same shit that I said to you in private. I'm going to say it in front of everybody in public. It's just going to be what it is. So I didn't really understand the whole thing about trying to have a storyline about somebody talk about somebody badly, especially how both Cynthia and Nene were out there in them streets anyway doing interviews talking badly about one another. So I'm like, what, what's the point? Where, where all that mess come from? So, but let me just get on into the um what I had wrote down as far as some notes or what I were taking in or was taking in throughout the show. Let me loosen up my uh, my little uh, scarf, okay? All right. But then we're going to go like that. So how the episode tried to unfold to us last night. He had Dennis walking in and surprising Portia. And he started reproposing to her all again. And, you know, it was just a hot mess. Cause I'm like, he is not the ideal man for you to be trying to say he's the perfect man. He admitted his guilt, this, that, that. What else he was going to do but admit his guilt? Well, nobody else really checking for him out there. And nobody was on your caliber that he wanted at the time. So, of course, you on TV. That's free advertisements for him. Anytime he get ready to show it, okay? So, you know, the whole deal about you you forgiving him, cool. Forgive him all day long and... If and if and when he breaks your heart again, yeah, we don't want to hear about it. Okay, I, I I personally don't. So I'm just gonna leave it at there. Okay, so when we go um to the expressions of how the people were looking, who were in the audience watching Dennis sit on both of his legs or knees trying to get down there to post the Porsche. Okay, but did y'all see how Ken looked? Kenya looked like she was disturbed. Like, no, this nigga ain't sitting up here. No, this Negro ain't sitting up here. Sitting up, uh, proposing to once ago my arch nemesis, you know, who drug my hair around 
the um the uh reunion hall where we were sitting no he ain't giving her proper uh etiquette of proposing and then not did it once but he did it twice girl it was not no smile on uh kenya face until they rolled it back again and i guess she couldn't keep up with her facial expression she knew she was you know kind of looking kind of evil then she kind of nice nasty like a witchy type smile to herself i said "Uh uh-huh i know it's eating you up kenya i know it is baby because you already told us what kind of proposal mark gave you which was piss poor and on the caliber you try to uphold yourself on being i don't know why you accepted his proposal but it seemed like you were kind of thirsty yourself okay yeah what it is okay and you still ain't told us whether he was good in bed or not you know just see what it is like i don't know like i said it was a fake fraudulent foolish fuckery type of uh marriage it, it can't be uh sought out because there's nothing there for anybody to find okay it's just like casper the ghost don't exist but moving on from you uh then we got dennis uh uh he kind of like shoved the ring back on portia's finger you know what I'm saying? like it was kind of stuck and he was drunk he couldn't get it all together i don't know which way it was but that was a piss poor type of scene and i'm like you hurt my finger nigga a, a, a negro you know what i'm saying get up off the floor anyway but she took it as it was she, same ring y'all same doggone ring now he said he was thinking about upgrading that gave us the impression or the assumption that he was gonna upgrade that ring but i guess when you already seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, i guess it didn't need to go nowhere else but polish it up put it back on her finger but like i said and I'm, i wasn't alone ain't no way in the world he would have got that ring back it wouldn't have been no after you did what you did okay no we had to go through litigation we had to go to court we had to go see and say wh- who get the ring okay what i'm saying or i don't i don't know but we wouldn't have gave the rain bad that's the only thing i know okay but anyway moving from that situation um that's when portia continues to make her ass out of herself and saying you know she decides to forgive dennis and all his wayward ways and and you know she she's trying to save it together for her family and i'm like girl what you have is a daughter what are y'all are doing is co-parenting at this time because y'all are boyfriend and girlfriend if you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty you're not his wife you're barely his fiance you're not uh, see it's just negative so i'm just gonna move on out that situation um then you know portia thought she was gonna get her some ping ping or whatever you know shake her little glory all over the little hotel room because she was making up with him and you know whatever but he only came in for one day to make that scene uh get you back and and which he knew he could have got you back at any time but y'all needed a storyline and here we are okay so he went back and that one day you didn't have sex with him or it didn't say you had sex or you were saying you didn't have sex, so whatever, okay? Moving on from there, we got Kenya and the girls back on the bus, and Kenya's imitating T- Tanya. Now, my thing is, you know, one time you do it, it's okay, it's cool. When you start doing it two and three and four times, you know what I'm saying? M- making fun of somebody or trying to imitate somebody's ways or their demeanor, then it's a malicious intent going around with that. It's just t- total evilness that Kenya took something that was fun, at one time, you know, everybody got their little jokes and kikis and ha-ha's. But we don't keep doing the same person over and over again. So that shows me that you are jealous of Tanya for some reason. Because there was no reason for you to keep imitating Tanya. Tanya's just joyful. She's just playful. She's lovable. She's loving life. And it just exudes out of her pores. It, it, it exudes out of her uh, posture. Her essence of who she is. And just because you can't be bubbly and uh, caring and loving all the time. Unless you're, you're holding your baby Brooklyn. That's the only time I can see really love exude from you. Real, genuine, solidified love and happiness and peace is when you're around Brooklyn. But when you get around Maul, you get around these other ladies. Hell, you probably out in public doing the same damn thing. You just evil. You just evil, can you? Just evil. But anyway, she goes on and it seems like everybody else is not really 
feeling it as well because Portia even mentioned something like, nah, you ain't gonna mess with my girl Tanya. You just keep you you doing too much, can't just sit your ass down. That's pretty much what she was saying. I was agreeing wholeheartedly with her. But anyway, uh continue can continue to make a fool out of stuff and it just is what it is. Um then she, um Kenya's going to call herself going on Portia, you know, since Portia had to make that little statement. She was saying, okay, you got married again. We all happy for you, this, that, and the third. Um, but what really happened between you and Dennis? You really didn't give us any tea on that. Can you elaborate, baby? Can you give us some insight? And it kind of took Portia off guard like, bitch, I know you didn't try to get into my uh, business, in a sense. I didn't offer no... Uh, explanation of why and what when and where okay and then marlo gonna sit up there and say well i want to know so if i need to keep my little furry friends meaning her pup is away from dennis because you know he got tied in with allegedly and the social media was saying he was taking part of bestiality type activities okay and uh it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So there be a lot of lies out there. And there's be a little bit of truth centered at the nucleus of that issue or that subject matter. You know what I'm saying? Or it could be a bunch of truth. Just a little bit of lie in there sometimes. You got to decipher it. You got to you know, pray for understanding and guidance. And then you'll get your answer. You will know it and you're good. Okay? On any situation that you're going through. But, uh, yeah. But Portia wasn't having it. She was like, look, it happened. This, that, and the third. Uh, it didn't happen the way social media was saying it was. You know, she was just lightly brushing over. Kind of what can you do when you ask her about more? It's kind of non-existent. She don't want to have a conversation with you unless she brings it up. And it's just going to be real quick, fast, and to the point. She just wants sympathy. But we moved on from that situation because Portia pretty much shut her down. And I was uh, here for that. Okay. Uh, then we go to... Um, she, uh, they get back to the room, uh, because they um, pretty much was they was on the bus riding back from Tanya's little uh finishing up with them night, you know, letting her know, uh, introducing her to her friends from grade school all the way up to college and her professional life, and she was just intermingling, letting them intermingle with her past to her present friends and her her friends on that Toronto side to uh, interact with her Atlanta side friends okay just off a show wasn't really no mingling going on it was just everybody was drinking and having a little partake of some food here and there probably finger sandwiches and they were just trying to be seen on TV if they could get a good right or left shot of themselves all right uh, but anyway, once they get back, they all congregate and say, well, we need to go have this discussion. Portia want to get down to this little snake gate, uh, which the people that knew, such as myself, it wasn't no snake gate. It was just Nene trying to solidify herself with the storyline for this season. And it fell miserably. And like I said, now she's the grandma of the show, or that's how I see her pretty much. And she just needs to sit in her little rocking chair and just uh, kind of give the women that are younger and are definitely running circles around her at this time because she just like she lost her footing. She don't know where she is, or where she needs to be. Because like I say, Marlo's just running circles around her. You know, she's stepped in as the HBIC in a sense. Uh, kind of taking Nene's role away from her and she don't even know that she's doing it. That's the sad part about it. But anyway, they all go and say, okay, we'll meet at Marlo's room. I don't know where they got the pajama part apart. I didn't really hear that. But Tanya came in and Nene came in and they lingerie type wear. And the rest of the women, of course, it was like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning that they were congregating. Because, you know, they really wanted to know who this person was recording and, and, and having conversations and you know, putting it on tape form or audio form and Nene trying to give us a dissertation on the difference between recording a conversation uh, unwillingly or unnoticeably and one that is really audioed where someone's talking, which that's total bullshit. We're still looking at the voice of the person who's supposed to be talking. Videograph is when you get in the whole body of the person and watch them talking. But you, I didn't need the explanation. Didn't nobody need the explanation. If anybody was high as crap around that situation at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, I mean, they got their buzz on either with the ooh-wee or they were drinking it up like it wasn't going to stop. 
they were tired of the foolishness. You were messing with their buzz. They was getting like wrinkles in their face and everything. Like, okay, you don't stop. You you playing with my emotions now. Now I, I need you to come on and tell me the truth before I say some stuff that ain't gonna be kosher. And I'm gonna call you out your name and how you've been acting. This that third. This uh, is pretty much how all the women were. They was on high alert. You know what I'm saying? Like we going to war and we on high alert. We at the last. We at, what do you call it? Mach nine or something like that. Hell, it might be a mock 12. I don't know. But that's when we finna push the button and we finna go to war. So that's pretty much how all the women were at this point in time. Except for Marlo. Because she knew it was bullshit from the beginning. And Nene could not bring off this telltale farce of a excuse of this is where we're going. And who, this is the person that's the snake gate. And this, then, a third. And she pretty much had already said uh, that... Yovana had said or she alluded to knowing information about the person that recorded which you know she didn't lie in that aspect because they had set it up for that you see what I'm saying but lo and behold what's her name Yovana didn't know she was going to get thrown away just like a piece of meat that you can't do nothing else with it has no more taste and you have to spit it out in a napkin or your hair just spit it out in a trash can if you're close to it and it's not offending somebody else that may be at the table with you you know what I'm saying so um, that's pretty much how that went uh, with the snake gate but they was in the room they was arguing back and forth with one another Mala was high as hell. I know Nene was high as hell because she came in there uh, in the room half naked. Like, we really wanted to see her breasts. Like, if I was younger and it was younger women around me, I didn't want to see your breasts or your uh, kahuki or whatever we were calling it back in my day. Damn sure didn't want to see it now. And, you know, I'm 51. We'll be 52 on the 22nd of this month. Yes, praise the Lord. But, I, you know, I don't want to see nobody my age coming out with no pasties on their breasts and stuff. I'm like, uh-uh, whether, hang, whether their breasts hanging low or sitting up real proper. I don't want to see that, okay? I get no thrills off of it. And it's just, I don't want to see it, all right? But, yeah, um, all the women, they going at each other. Um... I'm pretty sure Marla was high on something because she was just eating and how she was eating like she had the munches or something. And, you know, Cynthia was there trying to figure out, you know, who it was. She was pretty much pleading with Nene to tell her. I'm like, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. Girl, who gives a shit what you said, how you said it, and when you said it, okay? You said what you said because you was hurt. Nene was out there talking about you. You wanted to go tit for tat with Nene. And, you know, just if if nobody want to say anything, it's cool. Because you shouldn't be saying nothing around somebody that you can't say back in their face anyway. You should have said, F that tape. Okay, I don't give a crap. And I'm going to bed because I'm pretty high. I don't got sleepy. And I'm going to give me some rest. Okay, and that's how she should have played it out. Because going back and forth when we our age or what we are, we ain't got time for all that. Not no old jeans. It's like, it'll come to fruition one day or another. Everything that's done in the dog will come to light. Okay, and I would have be it them or do and I would have said good night but she was going back and forth with Nene Kane was having her little words and stuff and Marlo was telling Cynthia that you know you getting all upset and, and cussing and caring I ain't call you out your night she was telling Marlo that you know everything but under the sun or something nice okay I was like okay she tired frustrated we all can cuss here and there and sometimes when we cuss it really don't sound right. You know what I'm saying? So, Cynthia was like frustrated and I don't know. Then you had, you know, she was cussing out uh, Marlo, calling her out her name, cussing out verbally and stuff. And, you know, Marlo, she was half drunk, but she was getting right back with her. She was saying, girl, this is my house. You're going to respect my house. And I was like, Marlo, you don't turn this hotel in an ensemble on Marlo's palace. <laughs> Marlo, I don't know what she got or how she traveling with stuff that got her name on it. So, whether she lay her head, it's Marlo's world, okay? And they showed it on TV. It was quite cute. But I like, oh, my goodness. But anyway, moving on from that situation. Then we had, um, you know, people, Candy was getting upset, wanting to know Eva was getting upset. You know, Kenya always running her mouth in the background. And then Portia was getting upset. And so, everybody, you know, was alluding to... You know, they were lying and uh, saying that we already know you the snake, Yovana, and uh, 
Marlo said, no, nah, we don't know that. They just lying to you, baby. They lying. I wish somebody gone tell the truth. So this was really Yovana's time to say, you know, I was over at Nene's house. I had told her about this taping that someone had of Cynthia talking bad about Nene. Da, da, da. She could have just said it like that because that's what we really saw. And it would have been the truth. And then she could have came out with, you know, I thought I had audio of it, but the friend that was supposed to uh, have sent it to me, they never would send it to me. So, and it just would have been that, you know what I'm saying? And it, you could even put it to the fact that, okay, it was somebody I knew, but I don't know them like that. You know, something to that effect. It, you ain't have to really drop down. I mean, that's what an OG, just keep, just keep it, you know, what it is. And, and then if anybody really want to do something about it, then... You know, they'll be doing something in the air because it was nothing there from the beginning. Because they all talk about each other on the show. Every last one of them look like snakes to me. You know, they can't hold water. They toting messages back and forth. Some are privy to the information. Some is not. Then they introduce to the they in, introduce the information to the song that's not and it becomes this big old he say she say it say mess you know what i'm saying like we back in high school like a grammar school i'm like oh my goodness y'all doing too much you know and so and then um um everybody just you know kind of jumped on ivana verbally and so you know portia was getting up you know trying to you know act like she was I guess having flashbacks that it was her and Kenya first. And, you know, you might just got tired. She said, your man is the snake. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. No, she didn't go there. And see, if uh, Portia was all about that life, she already know she don't have an infraction with pulling on Kenya's head and trying to shake her every which way but loose. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they could have demoted Portia or it could have really got rid of her off the show, period. But they saw potential. They saw potential of Portia, and it's okay. You're going to get fined. You could talk about it in the media or whatever. It doesn't matter. And definitely, we're going to send you to anger management, okay? We're going to make this a statement. We don't condone that type of violence. We don't condone you putting your hands on somebody, and then you don't want to let them go. You know, that's, that's not what we do over here at Bravo Entertainment. So we see Portia had to go do these things and that, and some of it was televised or whatnot. But, you know, for you to get up in your Vana face, Portia, and try to think you're going to do that, no, nah, that girl from the street, too. And I would have hated to see that girl took a hold of you and shook you every which way but loose, okay? And then maybe she did want to treat you like a bowling ball and just throw you around. I, I don't know. You know, something like Portia, you know, just like you try to bully and get a hold of Kenya. It's always going to be somebody that's going to bully and get rid of you. You see what I'm saying? So don't touch the waters all the time because you might find an ass whoop around that corner. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, we're leaving that situation. Um, let me see. Hmm. Yeah, that's when it just got blowed out of proportion. I, now, I kind of expected that Cynthia would be, would be the punk and run out, leave everybody when she was the subject of conversation of having to have to, you know, be recorded and talking badly about Nene and this and that and third. And then Nene going to run out the uh, Cynthia and try to say, come on back, girl. Come on back. But in Nene's confession, she was like, the producer asked her, you know, why you didn't tell her. She's like, why should I tell her? She didn't tell me when I wanted to know. And she was referring back to um, the Sigrams party where King was coming. And she didn't tell, give Nene the uh, appreciation or the, um, what do you call it? Uh, for lack of a better word, she didn't show Nene any compassion to say, okay, your arch nemesis is coming. Do you feel like you want to show up or not? You know, it's my party. I'm inviting Ken. Y'all want her to come. But I understand. I'm giving you heads up. You either come or you don't. You know, let me know. Or if I don't see you, I know you just didn't want to fool with Kenya. Okay? So, that's how, you know, she should have left. And she said Cynthia should have gave her that option to uh, let her know on her itinerary who she invited and who she think is coming but like i said that's why you're in a situation needing now that nobody wants to film with you okay baby i'm just keeping it real all right um uh, one good bad turns deserve another one then we got um 
somehow uh, Yovana gets outside and her and Nini having a little discussion and she's trying to tell Yovana, these, you got me looking stupid out here. You know, you said you had this going on and these ladies think I don't lie to them. When I really pretty much got the information for you, I need you to speak up because, you know, you got us looking bad, especially me. I don't like looking bad. And I was, if I was look, Yvonne, I was like, girl, please deuces. You on your own. I'm gone, okay? I did what I came to do and you still looking stupid and they don't like me, but at least I stand, I stood up for myself, okay? I was about that business all right that's how i would play it there um then we got you got kenya and uh nini going at it and somehow uh nini hands got too close to cynthia's i mean got too close to kenya and i think kenya brushed it off and then that really set nini off like oh she you know she attacked me or i'm gonna get her and they start calling each other foul names you know um female dogs and garden twos and all this kind of stuff and you know they were really meaning that stuff but like i said they could have been under the influence of alcohol or that ooh wee and it just seemed like it was more than what it was necessarily meant to be and of course all the security guards came and got them and i don't know what the hell uh what's her name eva was calling herself pulling kenya back and and all this kind of stuff i'm like girl you should have been in a cut somewhere away from the cameras and then they could have panned on you like you were safe and you were just eating like you normally would do around in your pregnancy because you know girl you can eat a, a town dry okay and you still not gain no weight after eating the whole town and all the food up from the town you, you still wouldn't gain no weight so you, that's a true blessing that you have that that metabolism be speeding up and you are just flawless when you drop the baby okay so that's your 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 good deed or your good um uh, accolade for the day evil other than that you were just truly messy uh, like i said i would like to see you one season where you're not carrying a baby and you're really standing in your own shit and, and defending yourself or whatever you think you can defend with your actions i would just like to see it okay but anyway um kenya don't bit off too much more than she can chew in a sense because nini was about that life she was trying to comfort kenya then kenya gonna try to sneak um what's her name eva out the apartment not apartment but the room that marlo had them all in uh trying to use her as a shield that's what i said because uh, uh, wasn't nobody after Eva. Wasn't nobody after Eva, okay? She didn't need to help Eva up off that couch to walk her to her room. Uh, Eva was not in no distress. But I guess um, Kenya felt in her mind that she barricade or she puts Eva in proximity. Nene would not even dare try to get a hold of her. Because if she did, she would blame Nene for, you know harming evil and her unborn child and trying to get at her and then harm her as well so i saw that set up coming and i'm hopefully glad nini let or somebody definitely got nini held back because in in that instance it seemed like nini was a little enraged and she could have did something without even thinking about it and then she would have been looking at some jail time which kenya would have been smiling all the way down the road and then eva on the other hand talking all nasty uh talking about, i told you she was crazy i told you she was crazy. but i'm like damn didn't y'all just make up baby didn't y'all just make up when they were doing the fittings for their costumes for carnival didn't you and nene just have a conversation on meeting of the minds i mean i don't understand you would make somebody go crazy off on you eva because you do flip-flop you about like cynthia but two types of flip-flopping y'all got going on you know what i'm saying but y'all that's all i had for this ridiculous uh showing of an episode it did not really give me what i wanted i really thought people were gonna be standing in their shit but the only person that really did they done do was your bonner she wasn't about that i mean she was all about that life she's like girl come on come on come on get a little bit too close get a little bit into my personal space i'm gonna let you have i'm gonna light your behind up and i was here for it and you know i don't condone don't get me wrong i don't condone it but when somebody get in your space your personal space you got to defend yourself because you don't know if they're coming to do harm to you or they're just talking you know verbally you know what i'm saying you don't know you gotta always have your fists up your dukes and ready to slam on them jokers uppercut or something you know hit the thing like that i don't know because you 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 just self uh protecting yourself you know what i'm saying you're defending yourself but yeah marlo cussed everybody out and then the next day <laughs> 
<laughs> Mama gonna come back to the table. Say, sit down. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Ooh, it was the alcohol, baby. It was the ooh wee. It was just everything. It wasn't me, girl. But please, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for calling you out your name. Da, 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 da. And of course, like crazy ass Cynthia. She like, okay, fine. Cause it wouldn't have been me. I said, honey, I hear you talking, but you can't come in. I hear you talking, but you can't come in. Yes, I hear you talking, but you can't come in. You're not my friend. Never will be. Never again, again, again. You know, I've been saying, I'll keep a knocking, but you can't come me. That's what I've been saying to her and shading her the rest of that morning. Okay, she would have felt me then. And that would have been standing in your own Cynthia. But you always forgiven for. You always doing, you know, forgiveness is for you, of course. But, you know, some things just should not be tolerated. So they'll know how to treat you accordingly going forward. But then again, you know, I told her I, I expected too much from you. You didn't give me what I wanted then. You ain't giving me what I want from you now. So it's just status quo. Be up Nene ass. Be up Kenya's ass. Whatever. However you want to do. Just get you some shelter some way. Okay. Some way. Somehow. But don't let Mike find out about it. Because he's going to give you a lecture. Okay. But anyway. um, They go to some last dinner. Last lunch. Last breakfast or whatever. They get to talking. Because they uh, minus two people. Nene had to go somewhere. And uh, Eva had to go somewhere. Uh, they were irrelevant at this time. At this point. Yovana hightailed it out. Because you know it just is what it is. She did what she could do. She came. She conquered. She saw. And, and that was it. You know. Uh, pretty much, Nene didn't take up for her, did, just threw her under the bus. There was no more coming back from that scenario. And it just is what it is. But, you know, Kenya goes again. Candy goes again. Cynthia goes again. Now they calling their sales, teaming up against uh, Tanya. They know something on Tanya about her boyfriend for 12 years, been engaged, I don't know, maybe 12 years too. Uh, to Paul. Paul is pretty much freaking around on um, Tanya when she's not around or nowhere in the vicinity. He's, you know, tricking himself out with some women. Uh, attractive women at that. And um, they're trying to figure out. Kenya's putting the information out there. What if this happened? Would y'all want to know this? Would y'all want to know that? Now, who being the snake now? Who got the whole of some information quote unquote okay but you don't want to give it out see i don't like friends like that don't don't say no shit like that you you should have kind of like say okay we need to have means of the minds are we friends are we co-workers are we constituents what are we because i'm sitting on some tea i don't know if it's true or not but i got to get the monkey off my back this was what was told to me it was told to me in front of somebody else who's sitting at this table with the person really like to know and see that's how i would have came out with it and if everybody would say yeah 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 i'm like okay this is the person that is affecting it's affecting you tanya okay i'm sorry to tell you but from what i'm understanding this lady who owns or works at this cookie shop that's next door to cynthia bailey's little wine thing over there she came up to us or she invited us into a conversation where she told us that paul your fiance honey he cheating he cheating he he, he asked for her number one to take her out this then the third now here is the latest number you go on you handle your business i'm just you know i'm trying to be a friend i'm trying to be i ain't holding no secrets i don't want to do this i don't want to do that i want to give you the information i ain't spying i don't you know i really don't care but since you know it, you know it came to my ballpark I, I took a hold of it. I said, okay, we're going to either have a home run or we got to go in extra innings. But I'm going to get my, my hitter, my strong hitter, which is you, Tanya, since it's affecting you. I need you to go out there to bat. You, you, you tell me how this game is going to be played at, the, at this point. And that's all. That's, that's been a true friend. That's been a true G. And and then, you know, hell, you need all of us at this table to go run that joker down. We can do it, girl. Just tell, tell her what you need us to do. Tell us. Because I don't know. I don't know. The, the lady seemed legit. You know, she seemed legit. I don't know if she's trying to be thirsty, want to be on the TV show. But, you know, hey, call a spade a spade. What you want What you want us to do, babe? What you want? See, that's a real ride or die. That's a real friend. That's a real OG. That's somebody ain't talking behind your back. They bring the information to you, and y'all can come to a meeting of the mind of what we're going to do with this situation. Okay, but you got to handle your own balance. And if somebody else step in, then we got four people that can come and get tagged in. You no, know, because we ain't going to let you go down like that. But you got to fight this one by yourself, either legally or you put hands on. I, I don't know which one. Okay, that's going to be a fair fight. Uh, you know, 
But that's how I would have handled it, y'all. It wouldn't be all this going back and forth. It would have been juicy. It would have been showing, you know, camaraderie between the ladies. And all this other stuff. You know, we know people are going to add up within their circle. You know, it's going to be some jealousies running around here. You know, all this, that, and third. But we are grown. We deal with it accordingly. You know what I'm saying? And we come back together. That's solitude right there. That's unity. But see, like I said, they, they, they got the wrong folks up there playing on these reality shows. Because, honey, if I was on a reality show... <laughs> Y'all be tuning in every time because Dale would be up there checking somebody, or I'd be, you know, drinking or having me some fun, chilling and relaxing, you know what I'm saying? Getting the tea, you know, acting like a true G, you know, a little old gangster running around now, okay? Not taking no mess off nobody, but keeping it cool and culture because, like I said, somebody hit me, I'm falling to the flow. I ain't gonna lie, I'm being fetal position, and then when all done is said and they don't got the person off of me or whatever, take me to the hospital. <laughs> Take me to the hospital and call my attorney. I have him on retainer, and, and we're going to settle it that way. Because I ain't got time to be fighting with nobody. Uh-uh, no. I ain't like it when I was uh, in grammar school. Don't like it now because folks don't fight right no more. They ready to go get a gun, a taser, mace, or whatever and try to, you know, hurt you seriously. So I'm like, mm-mm, just let me fall to the floor however you let me lay there. No. I got you for the rest of your life. And that's, the pain would go away. I would heal. But your bank account would be dropping, 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 dropping. Okay? That's all I got to say. Okay? That's all I got to say. But anyway, that's all I have for this reunion. Not reunion. I'm sorry. Recap review of Snake by Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12, Episode 11. Make sure you get down in those comments. If you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Why do you keep coming on my channel and you won't give me the uh, the uh, consideration of just going on subscribing? Because you might be mad at me for now. But it may be a video that make you chuckle or make you laugh. And you may have kindred spirits with me and say, damn, I, I would agree with Dale. I would agree with Dale Chanel over there talking that smack. Yes, we family. You know, we fight here and there we disagree but we come back and we show unity we show love so i'm gonna need you to subscribe okay if you in earshot if you're in ear sight or, or eyesight subscribe 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 you know i love you okay uh we fam over him we keep it real but again share my videos i need you to share we need to grow over here yes we do we are growing appropriately and i appreciate everybody who stuck with me and telling people about me and, and going on and on and on and on and, and you know all that kind of stuff and i want you to like my video yes the more you like i guess i get tuned in to other big platforms that see me cutting up on this lower scale okay all right guys that's all i have like comment subscribe Share my videos and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. See you next video, guys. Bye-bye.